Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Naz and today I'll be discussing about leprosy. It is also known as Hansen's disease and it is a chronic granulomatous disease that affects skin and nerves. In skin it affects skin macrophages and in nerves it affects skin nerve shorn cells and it is caused by mycobacterium leprae. Mycobacterium leprae is a slow growing mycobacterium which cannot be cultured in vitro. It is an intracellular acid fast rod and it is an aerobic organism with a waxy cell membrane. Aerobic organism means it grows where there is oxygen availability. Its mode of transmission is from nose followed by hematogenous spread to skin and nerves. Males are more commonly affected than females. It does not cross blood brain barrier so it does not involve central nervous system however peripheral nervous system is involved. It can have two presentations when cell mediated immunity is high then it is tuberculoid leprosy with incubation period of 2 to 5 years and when cell mediated immunity is absent then there is lepromatous leprosy with incubation period of 8 to 12 years. I am going to discuss their further differences in next slides. So these are few clinical differences between lepromatous leprosy and tuberculoid leprosy. The number one is skin and nerves involvement. In lepromatous it is widely disseminated involvement and in tuberculoid only one or few sites are involved. Skin lesion margins. In lepromatous margins are poorly defined and in tuberculoid there is well defined margins. Elevation margin never occurs in lepromatous and it is common in tuberculoid leprosy. Color of lesion in lepromatous it, le it is slightly hypopigmented and in tuberculosis it is markedly hypopigmented. Sweating and hair growth is impaired late in lepromatous and it is impaired early in tuberculosis. Nerve enlargement and damage is late in lepromatous and early in tuberculosis. There will be many bacilli in lepromatous and bacilli are absent in tuberculoid leprosy. Lepromatous is progressive and tuberculoid is self-limiting. Reaction. Type of reactions I will discuss further in later slide but in lepromatous type 2 reaction occur and in tuberculoid type 1 reaction occur. Type 1 lepra reaction also known as reversal re reaction occurs in tuberculoid leprosy. In this there will be hypersensitivity and increased cell mediated immunity. Patient may have painful tender nerve, loss of function, swollen skin lesions and new skin lesion may also appear and its management is using paraprednisolone which is an steroid. Lepra reaction 2 also known as erythema nodosum leprosum it occurs in lepromatous leprosy. It is immune complex mediated condition. In this tender papules and nodules appear, painful tender nerves, loss of function, iritis, orchitis, myositis, lymphadenitis, fever and edema may also present. In moderate condition prednisolone can be given for the treatment however severe conditions may require thylodomide. The most common skin lesions in leprosy are macules and plaques. It usually manifests as hypopigmented anesthetic macules. Sensory loss is a typical feature of leprosy. Erythema nodosum occurs in lepromatous leprosy and leonine facies occur due to facial thickening. Here in this picture you can see hypopigmented lesions and you, the patient will not feel anything on these pigmented lesions that's why they are anesthetic macules. This is a picture of erythema nodosum. You can appreciate the red color circular. These are the picture of leonine facies which occur due to thickening of the skin. Peripheral nerve trunks are damaged and there will be thickened nerve. Radial nerve damage will result in wrist drop and common peroneal nerve damage will result in foot drop. Glove and stocking sensory neuropathy is also common. CNS is not affected because bacteria does not cross blood brain barrier. Pure neural leprosy can also be seen in some patient in which there will be asymmetrical involvement of peripheral nerve without any skin involvement. 
Other clinical features may include blindness, eyelid closure is impaired when facial nerve is involved. Damage to trigeminal nerve can lead to anesthesia of cornea and conjunctiva. Nasal collapse is secondary to bacillary destruction of bony nasal spine. Bilateral testicular atrophy can result in gynecomastia, azoospermia and hypogonadism. Diagnosis of leprosy is essentially clinical with the presence of hyperpigmented patches with loss of sensation and thickened peripheral nerves. However, to confirm the diagnosis, we can perform biopsy or skin smears. An acid fast bacilli test can be done on skin smears. Neither serology nor PCR is specific or sensitive for leprosy. The management of leprosy include multidrug therapy which contains rifampicin, clofazimine and Depson. These are given for 12 months in case of multibacillary leprosy and for 6 months in case of posibacillary leprosy. Rifampicin is given 600 mg once a month under supervision. It is a potent bactericidal for M. leprae but must be given with other antibiotics. Clofazimine is given 300 mg once a month under supervision and 50 mg daily self-administered. It is a red soluble crystalloid dye, weakly bactericidal for M. leprae, but it has side effects on skin that is they, it causes skin discoloration, skin become purple to blackish and it also causes ichthyosis which means a scaling of a skin like a fish. Dapson 100 mg is given daily and it is self administered. Dapson is bacteriostatic and commonly causes mild hemolysis and anemia. For posibacillary leprosis when, this, when there is 2 to 5 skin lesion, rifampicin and dapsons are given. Same regime is followed but for 6 month duration. And for posibacillary, if single skin lesion then rifampicin 600 mg and ufloxacin 400 mg and minocycline 100 mg is given as a single dose. There are some second line agents which can be used and they are bactericidal in nature example fluoroquinolones, ufoxacillin, clarithromycin etc. After three days of treatment the patient become non-infectious and uh, BCG vaccine is effective vaccine for M. leprae. This is the end of the lecture. If you have any query you can ask in the comment section. I hope you learned something from the lecture. If you do then please like my video, subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you for watching.